there's a fair chance that you may have heard of Nikola before, maybe in a headline describing them with the words such as Tesla killer or the future of the automotive industry. But are they really a Tesla killer, the future of the automotive industry, or just another fraud? Well, I wanted to figure that out, so I decided to dig into Nikola to figure out where they came from, what they represent, where they plan to go, and whether or not they deserve any of the recent hype, and if you should consider investing in them as a company. But what better place to start than with the founder, Trevor Milton, who is known for being an entrepreneur, but he basically only has failures to his name prior to Nikola. One of those failures was Upillar, an e-commerce website where Trevor claims they had too much demand but somehow capital dried up. Those don't go hand in hand. If you have too much demand and your business model is correct, you will have investors lining up at your door to put money into the business so you can meet the high demand and eventually make a profit company. But that wasn't the case. Another was D-Hybrid, which was a company based on converting diesel engines in trucks to run on a combination of natural gas and diesel to reduce emissions. That company had to go bankrupt two times before Trevor gave up on that idea. And the only explanation Trevor Milton has for those companies failing is that an investor took their intellectual property. But I don't see anyone using his fantastic original idea anywhere. So it couldn't have been that great of an idea after all, considering he went bankrupt with it two times and no one tried to replicate it afterwards. But all of this leads him to come up with a new great idea. Hydrogen fuel cells. Oh wait. Uh, sorry, uh, hydrogen fuel cells. Yeah, there we go. Don't, don't know why I messed that one up. <laughs> that, that's my fault. But anyway, he starts Nikola Motors in 2014, where the goal originally was to create hydrogen powered trucks because he believed that hydrogen was a better option for sustainable transport than electric was. Funnily enough, all the people who took the time, including me, to actually sit down, crunch the numbers and compare the multiple forms of fuels that you can use for transport would know that hydrogen isn't viable for the pure infrastructure needed alone. Not to mention the efficiency of a hydrogen truck and the price of one compared to an electric over the lifespan of the vehicles. But Trevor Milton was determined, so he and his team have come up with a bunch of different ideas for vehicles, including trucks like the Nikola One that doesn't have a price tag, allegedly can go 500 to 750 miles on one tank of hydrogen. Another truck is the Nikola Two, that is the exact same vehicle as the Nikola One, but doesn't have a sleeping compartment. I guess that counts as two different vehicles. The last truck is, you guessed it, the Nikola 3, no, the Nikola Tre. I don't know either. It's actually a Danish word. Tre means three. So interesting that he chose to go with a Danish word. I should like him more for that reason, but I don't which has a shorter range and will be aimed at different markets such as Europe and Asia. Okay, so they have three trucks they want to build. What will they cost? Well, no one actually has a clue, but you can order one and you can actually order an indefinite amount today if you wanted to. And it's not really a problem that you don't have any money because they don't require a deposit at all. You could order $10 billion worth of Nikola trucks and you wouldn't have to sign anything or put any money down. Which is exactly what happened. Nikola claims they have 14,000 pre-orders for their trucks. And that should amount to $10 billion in revenue. If people actually go through with their purchase, which is, to say the least, highly unlikely. But we might just have gotten a clue about what these trucks will cost. I took the 10 billion in revenue and divided it with the 14,000 pre-orders and ended up with a total revenue per vehicle at $715,000. And no, you probably don't know what this means since you're not in the truck buying business, so you have no idea if that is expensive or not. So let's compare it to the truck they will have to compete against, the Tesla Semi. First, let's take a look at the range. And to be fair, no one will reach the claimed range in the real world, so so 
let's just take a look at the claim range instead with a grain of salt. And if you ask Nikola, the trucks will go 500 to 750 miles. Also, they will tell you that electric trucks can only go 100 to 350 miles. But this is simply not the case. Tesla Semi provides two options, one with a 300 mile range and another one with a 500 mile range. So I don't know why they would be dishonest with their potential customers, but they choose to do this, so let's just go with it. What about charging and refueling these trucks? Well, Tesla has announced they will just make more supercharger-like stations that are suited for trucks. They call these mega chargers, which is totally believable since the supercharging network is already the largest infrastructure when it comes to charging vehicles. Nikola, on the other hand, will make 8 ton hydrogen infrastructure, which by the way is not cheap. Not cheap to use and not cheap to build. Trevor Milton foolishly estimated that these 8 ton fueling stations would cost only $16,000 including land. If you have any idea, any knowledge about this topic, you would know that an 8 ton hydrogen fueling station would cost way more than that. I wouldn't even have to go into detail on this, it should be common sense, it's not plausible for anyone to make that happen, and definitely not Nikola. But what about charging times? Well, Nikola states 15 minutes to fill up their trucks, that sounds pretty good, right? And Tesla only has a 30 minute charging time. But you see, this doesn't actually even matter, considering you are legally obliged to take a break lasting 30 minutes. So it doesn't really matter how long it feels, or charges for that matter, as long as it is 30 minutes or less. And you have the added possibility to set up mega chargers at the end destination so it can charge while the truck gets unloaded. And that is not a possibility for hydrogen since it requires so much square footage. Next up is the price of ownership, which is the most important thing. And I think this is what we've all been waiting for. There just is no comparison. Here's the chart made by people smaller than you and I and Nikola combined. So take a look at it, figure out which one is higher and then we can talk further. The main takeaway should be that fuel alone for Nikola's trucks will cost around the same as one Tesla Semi will cost all in including electricity cost. All right, so the business model doesn't even work on paper. Why should it work in practice then? Trevor Milton has made a lot of bold statements and he says that hydrogen is better for longer trips and batteries are better for shorter trips, which can't be further from the truth. But the boldest statement he has made is the one where he mentions the breakthrough battery technology that allegedly should have 500 watt hours per kilogram and cost 50% less than the current industry average. First of all, Trevor says in an interview with Tesla Daily that it isn't even something they have engineered. They just received the technology from scientists. What? And then he goes on to explain that they won't manufacture those batteries either. They would just hand it off to big battery manufacturing companies like LG Chem and let them manufacture it for them. So let's get things straight here. They didn't make any new battery technology themselves, they won't be making any batteries, and he can't back any of the claims Nikola has made about this battery up. Seems a little sketchy to me, but outsourcing is something Nikola is really good at. Which is the act of making other people make products for you. Isn't anything new for Nikola. You see, they actually plan to outsource their Nikola trade production to Iveco, a European truck manufacturer. The only thing they will provide for this joint venture is the knowledge of battery technology and power range, which has never been shown to the public in a working prototype, so it seems far-fetched that they would have anything to provide for this partnership. Nikola actually doesn't want to manufacture anything, and as Trevor Milton will tell you, it's because that isn't their strong suit. But for a company that plans to mass produce electric and hydrogen trucks, it seems weird that they don't want to do anything. I know you've seen the footage of this factory that has been playing in the background. And honestly, this looks like a great guy who's giving you a tour of a hobby he's really passionate about and thought he would never see the day when it became a reality. 
He says many times they started the company when they had no idea or thought that this would even work. This video gives me the impression that he cares more about his public image and what investors think of him, rather than devoting time towards execution on a daily basis, and giving people reasons to believe him and his claims. Blocking people on Instagram or Twitter who challenge Nikola on its many bold claims is an example of how Trevor acts extremely childish as a CEO. Creating prototypes is one thing, however, a manufacturing process, scaling production, and actually selling units is a whole other ball game. And honestly, I'll happily pass up on this company, especially after Trevor sold $70 million worth of his Nikola shares. A CEO who believes in his company long term does not sell out unless he sees those funds of better use somewhere else. His house is a better investment than Nikola shares. But I would have to give credit where credit is due. They have amazing skills when it comes to Photoshop. I mean, look at their website. There isn't a single working prototype shown or any vehicle that actually exists. To top it all off, Trevor Milton recently stepped down as CEO during the merger with Vector IQ and purchased a waterfront property in Utah for $32.5 million. Basically, he's ready to kick up his legs and let the new CEO try to figure out how they will get this company to actually produce vehicles. But the smartest thing is that when it fails, he is not to blame since he stepped down as CEO. This whole business model where you come up with an idea, take in massive amounts of investments before you actually have a working product to show for it, then lie about specs, data, pricing and functionality to further increase the investments in your company is actually something I feel like we have seen before. My bet is that this company will go down as either the biggest failure of modern times or the biggest fraud of modern times. But honestly, I root for sustainable transport. Hydrogen just isn't the future, which is even more supported by the fact Daimler recently dropped the hydrogen fuel cell program altogether even though they invested massively into it and also believed it was the future. They have now begun research and development on their upcoming electric vehicles instead. So if you currently don't want to believe that electric cars are the way to go for sustainable transport, I will gladly hear from you in 10 years or maybe even 5 years and let's put our money where our mouse is. I put mine in Tesla, arguably the leading company in all tech regarding sustainable transport and then you just put yours in Nikola. My predictions are that I will have gained massive returns on my investments and you will probably have gone bankrupt. But let's wait and see how this all plays out. Thank you for watching everyone, I thought it was important to make a video on Nikola considering the massive coverage they have gotten recently and the ridiculously high valuation so that you don't make the mistake of investing in them and losing your whole life savings. I hope I shed some light on this topic and if you like the video, subscribe down below. I will be uploading a bunch more videos on technology, finance, savings, investing and so on. With all that said, I'll see you in the next one.